Psychic hit me, tell me we got shit to do. We ain't got time like we used to. No, we still shine like we used to. No, we still cry like we used to. No, we stop times when we need to. Hey, everybody, welcome to what we've all been waiting for. I've been waiting for months for tonight. So put your fire emojis in the chat as we get started. Today is not just a, any typical Tuesday. This is book launch Tuesday for my good friend. Uh, I'm going to put some respect on her name, Professor Tanya Evans. <laughs> and um, hey, girl, hey. Hey, girl, hey. <laughs> What's good? What's good? How are you feeling, author? Amazing, amazing. This is so exciting. We've been talking about this for a long time, right? We have a been very long time. This. You have been ministering to me, encouraging me, and it's finally here. It's kind of like amazing. I put on some leather, but I had to like turn the <laughs> air down. I literally, the air is at 66, so I don't melt. But it was, you know, I wanted to you know, I want to bring a little something, something, you know, do a little something. <laughs> Listen, and you did it. You did it. You are a 
I, I might have to um get my fan out uh too over here because <laughs> I, I feel I feel the heat that you're bringing and I'm just excited that everybody's here to celebrate with you money demystified the launch party I am your host Minda Hearts and when my good friend Tanya Evans said can you be here to tonight I'm like where else would I be? <laughs> Where else would I be? Okay. Um, so listen, I know that you had an event last night, right? Yeah. So before we jump into the party, I just want to give everybody just a little Sam's Club sample of what popped off last night. Okay. <laughs> Yo, I love that reference. So it was fire. It was fantastic. It was funny because like two weeks ago, you know how you send out information and and then you stare at the, maybe it's just me. You stare at the inbox and you like, you hear crickets. You're like, I might throw an amazing party and no one's coming. Like intellection, I know that's not true, but you were. And then like within this last week thing, the love just came from every space far and near. It was a great reminder that we always have everything that we need because the energy was wonderful. It was this fantastic conversation with Lynette Calfani Cox. She wrote one of the authors, uh, the forwards for the book. And we had this great fireside conversation about the future of money. It was hosted by uh, my sister from another Mr. Dr. Kathleen Walls, where we did like a micro version of um, what we call Test of Money Monday. And so it just talks about spirituality and the energy of money. And it really comes down to mindset. So we spent time doing that. I kind of unpacked a few of the, the myths. We had some melodies from B. Shane Frederick and, and um, my mom was on and it was fantastic. So uh, it was well attended. I really enjoyed the conversations. I do have a, um, a replay of it. So after this, Look out in your inboxes. I want to make sure everybody has an opportunity to uh, take a look at that as well. But it was fantastic. It was fantastic. Well, I know that you like to do it big. So I I, <laughs> I already know I'll be getting in my inbox um, and, and coming back through myself. But, you know, again, welcome everybody to the launch party. We're here to celebrate. Um, if you, I know you probably have at least five people in your phone right now that are already texting you. Send them the link to join in tonight and let exactly. them party with us. Let, let them know, post it on your socials. Let them know that they're missing out. It's Tuesday, but we're going up on a Tuesday, right, Professor? <laughs> exactly, because Tuesday okay. is the new Friday, darling. I thought you got the memo. <laughs> Listen, and if you didn't get the memo, we are here because of Digital Money mis Demystified, the launch party. And for those who may just be like, they've been following you, but they don't know like, all about you. I want you to just let them know who you are. Remind them that you're one of one. You are that girl. You've been that girl. <laughs> just let them know before we dig into the juicy behind the scenes stuff of like how, what it took to, to birth this book, baby. I love that. Well, I am a tenured professor, full professor at Penn State Dickinson Law School. I have a co-hire appointment at the Penn State Institute for Computational and Data Sciences. It's definitely a mouthful because in academia, you know, we have way too many words with many syllables, but it's wonderful to even carry those titles, the latter in particular, because I didn't come from a science or technology or finance background. But because of the work that we'll talk about tonight, I was able to um, really carve my own path. It's a lot of the work that you talk about when you're just unapologetically forge, forging your own path. And it allowed me the opportunity to get this co-hire appointment that is um, very prestigious for somebody who does not have a technology background. Um, and so I love that. I actually, this is not my first book, although it's my first book in this particular lane. About 50, 11 years ago, I wrote a series of legal reference guides for writers because I'm in a, I'm an intellectual property lawyer by training. Um, I teach copyright and um, information privacy, administrative law, a lot of things that helped inform the way that I wanted to uh, write the book and all of the things that I want to do following that. Um, a fun fact, there'll be a quiz at the end. There might be surprises at the end, so y'all better listen. Um, I'm a former professional tennis player, fun fact. So I played on scholarship at Northwestern, um, played professionally for four years, and then I went to Howard Law School. Give me some um, Howard Law, Howard University, HBCU, love in the chat, HU. I know I can't hear you, but I want to hear you in the chat. You know what to say. Um, and it's funny because I took 
I took both a traditional and non-traditional path to what I do now um, because you kind of, I started, clerked in the third circuit, started in big law, had a soft place to fall with my mom who is a, a patent attorney. So we practiced together for a while. And then about 15, 16 years ago, I started teaching. It was going to be for a temporary time. And then 16 years later, it's like when you're on the road to tenure, you might as well just like pick it up. So all of those things have informed what I do now, but I kind of, you know, we'll, we'll continue to talk about this, but I, people ask me all the time, how does someone like you do something like this? Because I'm licensed in four states. Uh, I just celebrated here in DC, my 25th year. I started when I was very young. I'm a child prodigy, clearly. Um, but I, um, I've been out the game. I've been out of law school for 25 years. And so I've built a reputation of not only shooting straight, but it's a matter of integrity, which is incredibly important in the crypto and blockchain space because we got a lot of naysayers, but we also have a lot of carnival barkers. And my goal, regardless of what you do by the end of this conversation and after re reading Digital Money Demystified, all of my influences and who I am has led to the moment where I just want to empower people to have the right information so that they can make informed choices. So that's kind of both the tr traditional but non-traditional path to what I what I do now and why I'm so passionate about it. Hmm. I love that so much. And I see people in the chat. Listen, we're having a party. So stay connected with us. Use the emojis. Uh, I hope you have your favorite beverage. Um, it's after five somewhere. <laughs> so have your beverage and just uh, celebrate with us. I see some familiar faces in in the chat and i have to say tanya you know when you sent me how beautiful your face look earlier i'm like oh lord i i had to call my makeup girl like come come sooner, <laughs> come <laughs> sooner. i'm like i can't i can't show up uh, uh it, looking how i feel i i got it i got to get this face done so um so thank you for mm -hmm. for bringing the vibrations but what people are here for is your new book. Mm -hmm. We're celebrating Digital Money Demystified. So let's break it down, Tanya. What inspired you mm -hmm. to write this book? And you know, was there a specific moment or realization that made you think crypto curiosity community needed this resource? And I and I love that because listen, before you, uh, you 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 made crypto like okay for me because mm -hmm. I was scared. You know, I was like, is this monopoly money? What is going on here? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, us black folks, sometimes we can be a little skeptical, you know, so oh, a lot of skeptical <laughs> with good reason, right? With good yes. reason. Oh my gosh. It's crazy because in 2017, um, uh, a friend of mine, she was in law school, uh, not in law school, um, getting an advanced degree at Syracuse in, in media, like new media. And there was this working group where they were talking about the intersection of new media and this technology called blockchain, which of course I'd never heard before. And what I quickly learned though, is it was all software and there were intellectual property implications about it. There were copyright issues, there were patent issues. I didn't fully understand or appreciate the relationship between this novel way of organizing data that, that was that lesson was going to come a long time after that. But I wanted to understand, like, what is this magic Internet money? What does it have to do with this novel way to um, from like a democratic point of view, a little d, not not from a political sense, but something that um, allows everyone to participate and have access? That was interesting to me as well. But I didn't understand why do we need new money? We have money. I love this money. I, 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 I love money. It's it, it's. What is wrong with our existing money? And what I quickly started to learn is there's an interesting way that we exchange value that actually predates governments. Government form of money is called fiat. And a lot of times, look at what's going on in the United States, for example, where you raise a lot of money to protect uh, borders, right? You, you have taxes, you raise for wars. I'd never really understood or appreciated what the relationship between military and money was. And that was something that really kind of startled me a bit. It's like, well, what's the alternative when a government fails? It's harder to see, even though we're coming up against another government shutdown, blah, blah, blah. The dollar is the global reserve currency of the world. So, but 
if the, a government is on the decline, what would be the alternative? What may rise in its place to be a global reserve currency? It could be from another country. You know, it's not my prediction that in the next five years, Bitcoin or something else will be the global reserve. But imagine a world where you have a global currency that really honors the fact that we actually are one, not these artificial borders, um, and something that that doesn't isn't beholden to a particular government. That was interesting to me as well. And there, finally, there are just a lot of legal implications and issues. What are the regulations? What are the laws? We're literally creating the laws while we're going forward. And so I wanted a book that addressed all of those things as I worked through my own, um, my myths, my misperceptions, my misunderstandings about the nature of the technology, how it relates to finance, and why this might be empowering for those who have traditionally been locked out of the wealth building game here in the United States and abroad. Listen, th this new money, we better you, come close to the to the screen, <laughs> y'all. Okay. <laughs> you better get in on this new money because many people try to shut us out of the other currencies and the other money. And this is our opportunity to educate ourselves. We don't have to uh, move in fear. We don't have to move in scarcity. We get to get these good old resources that Tanya is giving us for uh, much cheaper than some other people would allow us to have it. So if you haven't got the book, we're going to drop a link in the chat. Make sure you grab it, grab it for you, grab it for your mama, grab it for your cousin, because we all need to have it. But for the people who are not familiar with this digital money, Tanya, mm -hmm. what do you hope readers will gain from the ones that know, maybe they think they know it all, but to the ones that are like, mm, I'm just on the fringes. Um, yeah. You know, what? what is the takeaway? Well, it's interesting because it kind of tees up two or three different people and drop in the chat for us where you think you align with kind of these three archetypes. The person who loves me is just happy to be here and knows nothing, right? They're like, Tanya's doing something, Minda's doing something. They like it, I love it, and I'm on. But you have no idea about crypto at all. And, and you're here to support. That might be one avenue. Then you have folks who know something, but haven't invested yet and are fearful. They see the headlines. They see um, bad actors like Sam Bankman Freed. They see the the uh, the failure of bankruptcies of exchanges, and that worries them. And it's enough to stay on the sidelines. And then, and we talked about this a bit uh, last night in the in the pre launch uh, VIP thing. What about all the people who got wrecked? What about all the people who got caught up in FOMO instead of? So we have FOMO, fear of missing out, and then you have FUD, which I talk about in the book as well: fear, uncertainty, and doubt oftentimes fueled by mis or disinformation for folks who have a vested interest in you not learning, right? Um, but people followed FOMO, they got caught up in the hype cycle. It was on the super, you know, advertising was on the Super Bowl. Tom Brady liked it, so we had to love it, right? Um, and then they got wrecked because they didn't understand, one, this is a long game. Two, crypto, if you invest, should be a small part of an overall balanced portfolio who didn't um, fully appreciate their existing relationship with wealth and money. So if we're taking bad habits into the future money, that ain't gonna work. Uh, got bad information, didn't know where to turn, listened to the folks in Clubhouse and on the YouTube. And it was difficult to find a voice kind of in the center that wasn't all crypto all the time or no crypto any of the time. So, and you used an important word that I want us to dig, you know, kind of dig a little deeper on this idea of fear, because at the end of this, the, you fear and something that is productive, that those are both energies that can occupy the same space. And that can really keep you from the blessing of understanding new that might give you a first mover advantage in a way that uh, black and brown folks, women in particular, have not had the ability to participate in. So you know, we can talk about redlining and, and all of the other things, the isms that are kind of hardwired wired and baked into the system. But right now, it's the mindset and education that is preventing us from participating in the future. And we control that. Um, and so we but we got to get this fear thing together. Absolutely. And, you know, I'm so excited that everybody's here because we are about to uh, pop pop that curiosity popcorn and we're going to push away that fear so that when people leave by the end of the party, they're mm -hmm. going to have everybody, they may not be like the founder of crypto and blockchain and <laughs> digital money, but they don't have a, an understanding. But th 
there are some people out there who I'm sure came because they want to know a little bit of your writing process. So before we like dig into the real meat and potatoes of the book and give away, we got some exclusive content, some, yes. some, some exclusive stuff coming your way uh, in the hour. But I want to talk a little bit author to author because there's plenty of people out there who are like, oh, I can't wait for my book launch day, right? Um, and we don't always get to talk about the behind the scenes of, yeah. of the writing process. So just for a little, you know, let's give the community just a little, you know, journey into what it was like to write your book. And, you know, you've written other books before. So what was different about this one? You know, I I'm ready to, to sip my tea while, while we listen in on the behind the scenes of your process. This was a fascinating project. Uh, the first series of books um, a while ago was a lot easier to write because one, they were legal reference guides, really grounded in copyright law or literary law. I was using contracts from my entertainment law practice at the time. And it was all clear in the sense that the laws that applied I just had to write about those. There are only a certain number of ways that you can write about copyright, for example, or to share my publishing agreements or you know, uh, co-publishing agreements, licensing agreements. Those things have been so well established for so long. It was just about the process. And, and it's not an insignificant process. I do not mean to minimize it, but I had a ready um, repository of information. And then it was about the process of organization of it, um, not using multiple, multiple, uh, multi-syllabic words in order to make a point. Um, we're bad at, at that as lawyers and also as um, academics. And so really making it accessible was important back in the day. Today, it's equally important as well, but without the safety and security of knowing precisely what the law is, where this is going, the fact that I, I had to find a way to make the content evergreen because I was committing to, to writing something that if I went too in the weeds, if it was too specific about the technology or the state of the art, it was going to be out of date in six months, in three months. This is a lifelong learning process. It's continuing crypto education. People call me an expert, expert but I learn something new every day. I just at this point know more than most because I have a head start. I've been doing this for six, almost seven years, but we're like building the plane while we're flying it. You know, I went earlier this year in March to testify before the House Financial Services Subcommittee on Digital Assets, uh, Financial Technology and Inclusion. And legislators are trying to figure this out. Regulators are trying to figure this out. I recently, um, I'm in DC now, but was recently about two or three weeks ago here and took a meeting with uh, some lawyers at Treasury. The Treasury Department is trying to figure out how to tax it and what makes sense. So part participating in those opportunities gave me kind of like a bird's eye view of if they're trying to figure it out, I know the average person is as well. But before we can even get to that, what information do people need so that they can decide if they want to take a course? They can decide if they want to invest. They can decide professionally what pivot they might make. And all of these things I had to do for myself, the 10 myths in the book. Um, and I had a bunch of them that I could have included. So when you talk about the writing process, it's one, I believe that this exercise that is creative and you know, focused on education and information is a gift. Uh, you're a writer, so you understand it kind of comes through you, but it's not of you. It's my responsibility. Like the first level of that gift is just to get it out. And then it is to package it in a way where I'm not focusing on me and what I want to say, but what? how do I want this to be received? What is the end result? What impact do I want to make on people so that I'm leaving them better than I found them? And so I had a, you, you can't do that at the same time, right? You have to get it out. Um, but then that next level is certainly how do I organize this? And, and shout out to Broad Book Press, um, Vanessa and Jennifer that had done, did an exceptional job in like the editorial uh, and post-production process. But you got to sit down and write the book. And I was grateful to find my way to a topic that's evergreen, um, that that's the first step. And then if somebody wants to take the course and move forward, that's something. But this is the solid foundation that gives people at like 
separating fact from fiction, straight note chaser, just the facts, ma'am. And then we can kind of move forward um, using my own experience uh, as the guide. I love that. And listen, if you have any questions through the course of our conversation, drop them in the chat or put them in the Q&A. We want to hear from you. Um, and we have some like fun interactive things that we're going to get into, but we definitely want to hear just the marvelous, the wonderful uh, Tanya Evans and everything that that she's done. And I'm just curious because, you know, you started with some Beyonce was there, what was like your playlist like, okay, <laughs> when you were writing? Because I don't know about you, but um, I need music when I, I'm actually writing my fourth book right now. And I'm like, I got to get these playlists together because this is how I, I keep going. This is my energy. Yes. Oh, energy. I see what you did there. Was that a Beyonce reference? Was that a low-key Beyonce reference? Um, it's interesting because I can't listen. It depends. It depends. So sometimes it's like that easy listening or solo piano. They don't have any words. If a song has words, there is no writing being done. <laughs> so, it, I mean, the vibe is really anything that I would listen to in the spa, but just like a tick up because it has to be energizing. Other, otherwise, it's like, I don't want to nod out when I'm trying to write. Um, I tend to be a night owl. So sometimes there's like, Honestly, I would have the TV on before I'm listening to something, unless it's solo piano. That's actually my favorite. I can wake up to it and I'll go to sleep to it. And if as long as I can't sing with it, then it can stay. But, um, you know, a fun fact about me, because you think me of this learned person, I'm really good for having something bingeable in the background. Um, I watched Love is Blind. <laughs> These are things <laughs> Oh, but so that's the real tea. That's the real tea. There'll be something um, that I that doesn't require me any. Oh, and also Food Network. That would literally be on in the background as well. So food and tomfoolery. Those are the things that that energize me. <laughs> we love it. Listen, I'm a big proponent of a, a good Love Is Blind episode <laughs> or Love Love Island. I hate to admit it to the to the group here. Oh, good. I feel seen. I feel seen. It's just fun to talk. It's okay. And you know what? It's funny because you are a night out because sometimes I would get a text from you. I'd be like, what's this girl doing? <laughs> I, I have to look at my watch. Like, what's she doing? <laughs> right. Is she in the United States? We don't know. <laughs> that, that too. I don't know where she's at, but uh, where where in the world is Carmen San Diego? Yes. Um, I, I wasn't sure, but um, I love that so much. And the last question that I want to kind of ask you about the process before you jump back into it. So if you're just joining us, welcome to the party. We're here celebrating my friend and her book, Digital Money Demystified, A, 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 A. Um, and so we're, you know, we're just dripping it out, not giving away too much. Uh, we, we want you to stay till the end. But um, what did you learn about yourself mm. during this process? Because I know about me, every book that I write, I learned something new about mm -hmm. myself, you know, my strengths, right? Where I can go, where I can take different things. And I'm just wondering, you know, as, as a personal aside, what, what did you learn about yourself after, after this book? Well, you know how, when, if you're writing, if somebody writes a book or you, you set out to write a book and you say kind of like music too, this has never been done before, never been seen before. Then on one hand, it's like great, but on the other hand, one that's not true. And two, you really do have to find the similarities or nobody will know where to put it on a shelf, et cetera, et cetera. So, and you know, I love my research. Um, and I want I spent a lot of time researching because I wanted to up until the last minute, I was continuing to update things. Um, and what I started to learn or feel the weight of was the responsibility. Like once I set this into motion, that this was going to be in folks' hands who were relying on me to tell them everything and kind of curate the information that would be most helpful. So that's really where my my academic hat is. And, and certainly as a lawyer, it's like, how do you, it, it was the awesome responsibility. And then just being really proud, being proud of, um, the ability to have gone so far in this journey that now I look back to figure out what is it that I wish I had known at that time, now that I'm here, like write this book for the Tanya from five years ago. Um, and so that was an interesting journey too. It wasn't like a present day thing so much as I'm writing it now to help the person who is just starting like I was. I understood very much like all of the, the questions that I would have, 
uh, all the mistakes that I made. I made every single mistake. I believed every single myth here. And just because I call it a myth, this was the other thing, doesn't mean it's not entirely true. Like sometimes with a myth, there's some type of kernel of truth. And so just learning how to use my existing expertise and research and writing skills in order to deliver something that is also an enjoyable read. So, you know, looking at all of the books that already existed, so that even right down to the cover, right? To do the opposite of what everybody else was doing, like a dry finance book or a dry tech book. Um, and that actually challenged me because I can be buttoned up, you know, like the Professor Evans and behind the podium. So I learned that when it's easier for me to demystify the space, if I remove the barriers of learning, um, which also challenged me, but it made me a better writer. It made me a better researcher. And it, uh, I believe, made this a really enjoyable read because I'm a super private person as well. But I feel like um, sharing more of myself and my journey made it more authentic. You know, it's like you and I um, talk about authenticity and what that means and having that come through your writing. And so that was something that I definitely paid attention to um, as well. Yeah, I love that so much. Uh, I feel that same way when for those who may not know my work, my first book that I wrote, it's called The Memo. And when I think about who, who I was when I wrote that book in 2017, 2018, then it came out in 2019. And then my next books, who I was and even who I am, right, writing this book now. And um, it's like, I, I also am reintroduced to new pieces of myself each and every time that I, that I do that. And so um, I love that for you. And listen, I write business books too. So you're like, how can I keep this where we, it doesn't become like a snooze. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. exactly. So I, <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, the other thing I know that people who may, you know, the book just came out today, so they may not have finished it just yet. So we just <laughs> want to keep giving them, giving them more Sam's Club samples, you know, yeah. um, Let's, could you highlight maybe one or two chapters or a section from Digital um, Money Demystified that you believe are like straight up game changers for, for the readers? We, now, listen, we're not giving away too much. So, you know, don't get mad at us. Just, uh, just <laughs> it's a taste. The first hit. Is... <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was thinking about like what part would be really, really great to share. And I'm interested in sharing a bit of the introduction because it kind of echoes some of the things that we touched on, but one of the really fun parts of the book that I enjoyed writing was describing my own rabbit hole experience. We call this like the crypto rabbit hole because at first you're like, oh no, that sounds weird, I don't know. And then you just get something. And next thing you know, you're tumbling headfirst into this wild, crazy world. Um, you don't, it's kind of mystical and magical. You don't know things, but every question leads to like 10 other questions. And um, and so it kind of chronicles my, my experience, but a little of it, I hope will help everyone perhaps see themselves in this too, as you, with intellectual curiosity, go forward. So a bit from the introduction. Anyone who knows me, the highly risk averse, color inside the lines, follow the rules even when no one's watching me, knows that I am one of the most unlikely people to let any risky venture see the light of day in my life. Not with the hard earned money or my harder earned law degree and licenses to practice law in four jurisdictions or my unimpeachable reputation as a well respected attorney and successfully tenured law professor, not for some newfangled, magical, untraceable internet money I'd heard was only used by criminals on the dark web. Something that was surely a scam and little more than a Ponzi scheme, money, imagine me using air quotes with an eye rolling, give me a break effect, that wasn't backed by anything real and therefore had no real value. Some types of money people refer to as currency, but that was not money issued by any government or recognized as a lawful currency. Currency that was not only currently kept in, that was not only not kept 
uh, in traditional banks or federally insured by the FDIC, but also was not regulated, had no physical form, was mined like gold, uh, but with computational power, whatever that is. The bottom line, a fad, clearly, only for the libertarian-leaning crypto bros, and too complicated and too risky, with no redeeming qualities worth investing any time or actual government-issued currency fiat into, period, or so I thought. But somehow, my intellectual curiosity got the best of me, and on my quest to get to the bottom of what cryptocurrency and blockchain are, why they were created, and by whom, and even more importantly, what impact these technologies would have on the next iteration of the internet, trade, data creation and management, and the transfer of value globally, I began busting myth after myth. And it didn't take too long for me, the most unlikely crypto fan, to find myself falling headfirst into the infamous crypto rabbit hole and changing my life both, both personally and professionally forever. Don't you just want to read? We, I, I feel like I'm at school, Tanya. I could sit and listen to you read for the rest of the night, you know, story time. Um, I love it. Put your emojis, put some fire signs in the chat. Get, give us some love. Uh, this is your book. This is your book, baby. We're celebrating you. And, you know, thank you for, for sharing that. And I know, um, I, I, I have to tell the audience now, Tanya, that there's going to be some giveaways and things. So listen, you don't you don't want to leave the party because we got some good stuff coming for you. But for those who've been with us, I know that you have some exclusive content that you want to share. Uh, is now a good time to talk about that? Yeah, that's good. I have this like what I, I wanted to find a way to create just like a mini version, not a big giant version, but a mini version of a training. Everybody on here comes from different levels of understanding. Some people have invested, some not so much, et cetera, et cetera. But just give kind of like the the why. We can deal with the how later. Uh, one of the really uh, exciting things, and I'll be giving away some memberships, but I'll tease it a little bit now. It's a great start to get the book. We want you and a hundred of your closest friends to do so asapidly. So we can make this a number one bestseller at a bare minimum in, in, in virtual currencies. But it really is just the beginning and it's a continuing process. So having the uh, companion website at digitalmoneydemystified.com will actually serve as a ready repository for every update I ever do for the book. Anything in between editions will land there and will be shared exclusively with members. I'll be giving some memberships away uh, tonight, but at least I wanted to share a little bit of a training and I have a few slides to share. So that you have an idea of why should I care? What's in it for me? And once, and that's what helped me, you know, when I was right before I fell down the rabbit hole to figure out the why. And then that would lead me with the next step of, okay, now how? So let's, we, we can do a little bit of why, maybe about 15 minutes of why. I love that. I love that so much. Um, so do we want to do the why now? Do we want to wait or we what do we want to do? Let me, well, we teed it. Let's do this. Let's give away a little something right now. Let's do it. Let's do it. I think it's time. Uh, who don't like a door prize, a party <laughs> prize, a gift bag? <laughs> okay. Okay. Let's do that. Um, last <laughs> night, it was really, really uh, exciting. And so I want to um, share the love again. Let me get my notes in front of me. And team Listen, D um, yes. <laughs> the team is ready. The okay. Is ready. Who, <laughs> the team is ready. We like prizes. Last so night we had like a tambourine. We don't have any tambourine. There's, there's like a little shake thing. I don't know. Uh, but we will tonight. I want to give away a few signed copies for sure. I like that. Um, mm -hmm. and then a few, um, comp access passes to a short course that I did based on the book as well, a digital money demystified fast action bundle. You can make your way through it in about an hour. And it's like quick start, do these things and you can get up and running in as, as little as one hour. And then I'm gonna give away, that's gonna sound crazy because this is good stuff. And we don't give it away on the website. But we're gonna give it away tonight. Three annual memberships for free for the Digital Money Demystified Membership Club. It's where I now put all of my e-learning suite, that is live monthly masterclasses, 
That is the video replay. It's priority access both to virtual and in-person events. And for those who are annual and lifetime members, you get special perks to do in-person things with me as well. So instead of doing a master, my mastermind, which is $15,000 or a one-on-one, -on -one, which goes up above that with corporate trainings, you can connect with me in community curated content coaching um, in the membership and then get the updates to the book. So we're going to be giving away some of those. So let's, um, I want to do, let's do one of each right now. And we have the randomizer, but we're, we're, I'll give away one book, autographed copy. We'll give away one bundle and then one, one membership. And we're going to keep doing Ooh. this. Ooh, I mean, you, you feeling mighty generous tonight. huh? <laughs> I've been drinking. <laughs> Somebody better Listen, stop. Me me members only. Come get it. Come get it. So we're giving the book. Okay, let, let's go. Um, uh, let's team team DMB. <laughs> yes. Who who's up? Who's up first? Who who gets that book tonight? Shoot me um <laughs> the, uh, the uh in in a direct message the person up for the autographed copy of the book and then we will do that. I'm late. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, the randomizer's going. We got it. We we got the play tambourine. It, I know. It, it's, the drum roll is going. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> there we go. Did that just come to me or to the whole people? I see Sandra. Sandra, Sandra. Sandra, <laughs> come on down. Come on down. <laughs> come on down. Come on, on down, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Sandra Brown, there we go. <laughs> there Congratulations, we go. Sandra. Yay, I love it. So uh, the tambourine is shaking for you and we have the information team, write that name down and I will make sure that we get that. Yay, yay, yay. All right, the the bundle. So the it's called the, um, Fundam it's a Future of Wealth Fundamentals short course or fast action course. So let's do that now. Let's go team. Let, him, let me know. <laughs> and the winner is Marty Holiday. Marty. Okay, Marty, come, come on. on down. <laughs> come on down. Come on down. down. <laughs> Congratulations. And you all have to stay because must be uh, must be present to win tonight. Must be present to win. And if you ain't, somebody will be happy, happily take that membership off your hand. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So Marty gets the uh, the fundamentals quick start. And that's really, I was excited to put that together. And so that's fantastic. All right. And now the year membership, you can learn more about the memberships at digitalmoneydemystified.com. This is a complimentary annual membership. The first year is complimentary. The second year, you know, the first hit we said is always free. But here we go. The winner of the annual membership uh, where you get the portal, you get content community coaching is Roger Jackson. Shout out to Roger. Come on what? down, Roger. Congratulations. Da, 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 da. Let's go. I hope we don't have to pay for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do your music these days. I see you, Roger. I see you. Well done. Well done. Oh, that makes me so excited. Yesterday, I am too. Uh, we, um, you know, I'm having this retreat down in San Juan. Um, and the room block is closing. I had a couple of spaces left and, and people stayed on to the end. So I went crazy and gave a little bit of that away too. I don't know. I might continue to go crazy. We don't know, but you got to stay to the end to see. And look. Listen, who doesn't want to go to Puerto Rico? Listen, listen, tag, I was going to say tag a friend. You all have a couple people that you know that need to be here at the party. They need to be in on this digital money. They don't need to be left uh, to their own devices. They need to get it. It's okay. So grab the copy of the book if you haven't already, um, wherever you like to buy your books or go to Tanya's website. We'll drop the links in and make sure you get it for you and a friend. If the holidays are coming up, you know, we we don't get stuff just for ourselves. Um, our success is not a solo sport. So make sure that you grab a few copies um, and you work through that bad boy together. That's what's up. Yes, that is a really important point. Let's continue to um, emphasize that doing this in isolation is really, really difficult. 
really difficult. Um, I certainly don't. The, the way that I was able to move quickly in those first couple of years was going to meetups, talking to people who they didn't always look like me. Oftentimes I was the only black person or person of color and certainly uh, woman. But over time, it really requires community to figure these things out. And I have found that the community has largely been um, welcoming in an odd way. Even some, you can be the only person in the room, but if people are welcoming and engaging you in conversation, that's important. And so, being connected with people who you trust in a trusted community that supports you is critical to your success as you move through this crypto journey. Um, as you say, Minda, it's not a solo sport, right? <laughs> um, and so it's really important. You have a lot of accountability personally, but it really is about connecting with folks um, uh, in community. A thousand percent, hundred percent, uh, amen and amen. Listen, I know that we just gave away some really great, well, you gave away, I, I just got to, to see it. You gave away some really great prizes and um, perks, but for those who did not win yet, you, there's still some time for maybe some other things, but what exclusive perks or insights do readers gain if they purchase the book today, launch day? Now, this is good stuff. Thank you. So you purchased today and there's a ton of value uh, this is the what you would do is just either send me the order number through you've gotten a million emails from me at this point just reply to that and my team and I will see it and said I ordered here's my order number or take a screenshot you can take out your uh, personal information a screenshot of that and send that to us and you will receive uh, five bonuses so first would be um, some of my checklists. So the prudent investor checklist, being a prudent crypto investor is not an oxymoron. It's actually something that you can do. And I take you step by step to go through uh, with the prudent investor checklist. You get the glossary as well. Um, a number of my white papers that I've written to help you navigate various areas. And there's also the uh, Digital Money Demystified Bundle. So it's a bundle of tools and resources that will support you in your journey early on. This is um, uh, kind of like an assembly of things that I wish I had when I started. And actually the technology and the tools and the devices have improved significantly in a very short period of time. So I'm gonna give you a solid foundation to start. So go out and get it either support an independent book publisher, you look in the chat and we actually have discounts for people who are ordering it with that specific link tonight. Um, if Team DMD, drop that again. I saw it earlier, but I just want it in front of me so I can um, see it. So I'm looking out for emails all night tonight. I'm going to be up drinking my champagne and fulfilling orders. Um, I hope I get it right. Uh, my team will be with me, so I don't get too far off, but, but you can get a lot of stuff for this value, not only the book and supporting me, which is critically important. Amanda, definitely talk about that because the, the success of your success as a best-selling author is not an accident. There's a lot of intentionality that happens and it happens in community as well. So the support is great for me. I'm supporting you on your journey and I want to reward you for doing that today because today is so important on launch day. Could you kind of talk about from your own experience why launch day is important? Yes, yes. Listen, you're not here just because by happenstance, you're here because you care about Tanya, you care about your future, right? And, but the most importantly, you care about her success, right? So if we want more books about digital money, if we want other books by Tanya, we want other books by women, black women, brown women, um, anyone on, you know, at any intersection that is an indominant majority, we have to support, right? It's not enough to just say, oh, girl, you did a good job. You wrote that book and, and pat, pat her on the back. We have to show the receipts in the, in the chat. We said the receipts and the receipts right. is we have to make the, go to Amazon, go to the booksellers, call the library, say, we need this book, right? When someone asks you, uh, what are you reading? You say <laughs> Tanya's book, right? And you tell mm -hmm. them, you know that there's somebody's birthday is coming up. But this week is very important because this funnels in the bestseller list, right? And so I know when I was trying to sell my book, they were trying to tell me, oh, this book would never sell, blah, 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 blah. And our receipts showed them differently. And because of that, I was able to get 
three additional book deals. But those things don't happen if we don't show up that first week, if we don't show up for her. And so the best thing that you can do is make sure that you click that link and you get the book, right? No one's saying you got to read it tonight, but you get the book (laughs) and you start reading it. It'd be nice if you start reading it tonight, but you know, get that book, get it for somebody else. Listen, the holidays are coming up. Don't wait till, you know, the, the, third week of December, get the book now, get your stocking stuffers ready. But this week is so important because we want to see our sister's name in lights. We want to see her celebrated because she's put a lot of work. Her team has put a lot of work into this week and it's a good, great book. Okay. I'm not just putting my stamp on just anything. I, I don't, I'm not just showing up <laughs> for anybody. Okay. <laughs> right. And so I bought a few copies myself. I'm going to buy a few more. And um, I also, I haven't told Tanya this, but I'm also going to pick um, her book as my, I have a book club that I do on LinkedIn. And so my November book read is going to be digital money. And so I demystified. And so I want to continue to make sure that people get the money and are not fearful. Right. And so again, I'm going to keep saying it a couple more times, but get the book. It's a great book. And this is for you too, right? So yes, you're helping, um, you know, someone that we all care about, but you're also educating yourself so that you don't be left out in the cold, that you don't, you're not still using BlackBerry when everybody else done moved on to the next one. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> we, we, we want you to be, you know, in the know. We want you to be in the zone. So when people say crypto or they say blockchain or they say some of these, that you're not looking like a deer in headlights. And which leads me to a quick question, Tanya, because- there's some people out here who are skeptical. They're like, I don't know. Um, I'm hesitant about the digital money, so I'm not going to get the book or whatever have you. Can you share a real life success story or transformation you've witnessed due to crypto? And I think what they're going to hear is we won't have to sell it too much more. <laughs> no, that's right. Well, that's a case in point is the the gentleman who was um, in charge of our beautiful jazz last night, V. Shane Frederick was a wonderful and glowing example of someone who took my first course, my my flagship course is known um, uh, as From Cash to Crypto. And you see that name in the, the subtitle of the book as well. He took the program, he did what I told him to do, and he was able, particularly at the height of the last bull run, which means when prices are continually rising, um, much like what Bitcoin has done in the last week. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, But Shane was able to fund and finance two of his uh, CD productions during COVID because of the proceeds of, you know, classically buying low, selling high, having this resource that we call cryptocurrency, but it's almost a bit of a misnomer because in addition to uh, being used as currency, I could use Bitcoin or Ethereum as one of the 30 or 40,000 different other types um, as well. But it also is taxed in the United States as a capital asset like stock. So you are enjoying capital gains and capital losses. It's what uh, wealthy people tend to focus on instead of high income. So many of us invested in education to get a high paying job. Most wealthy people do not want high income because it's taxed at a higher rate than capital assets. So it's really interesting how a digital asset can be both used for day-to-day medium of exchange, right? You can use it as a unit of account, one, two, three, four, keeping an accounting, but you can also use it as a store of value that you buy it at one point in time with the hope, and that doesn't say it's not going to fall through the floor, but also hit the ceiling at some point. But over time, historically, if you look at things, um, you can use it in that way as well. So Shane financing his project is fantastic. Um, And I'll use my own personal example as a a short point as well. I served as the chair of the Maker Foundation, which is a decentralized, uh, a decentral, um, the DeFi, a decentralized finance protocol. And I won't go into the weeds of what that is. But once you have crypto, you're able to kind of be your own bank. You can leverage it for other things and you can really start to take off once you're in the DeFi space. Um, And I was being paid in the token of that project and the value of those tokens over time. I wasn't really able to cash them out. We had insider trading rules and all sorts of stuff, but the value of them went from hundreds to thousands um, through no real effort on my part in a relatively short period of time. 
that I know of no other asset that can perform so substantially in a short period of time. Um, after that, did I notionally on paper lose a lot of money? Sure did. But I was also able to set my own agenda and give myself options and help my family in a time that mattered. So those things, it's not about timing the market, but time in the market. And that over time, personally and professionally, I have benefited. Shane's a great example. I know I have some students here in the chat. If you're willing to share your own personal story of how things were transformed, um, I think that would be helpful to let other people know that this is not something that you just hope for the best. You can be strategic and it really can move the needle um, personally and professionally. Listen, uh testimonies, right? It, what, what, what do they need? They here need some testimonies. You gave right. some testimonies. Testimony okay. about testimony. <laughs> <laughs> testimony. Listen, it's nice to have a testimony, but when you got some testimony to it, it hits different. Okay. Yeah. It hits different. And you know, something you said, Tanya, was about kind of a mindset shift, right? Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of this is because we've been used to doing money you know, a certain way. Um, many of us, depending on how we grew up, we never talked about money, right? Uh, or we, and so, you know, it's it's a weird thing, or maybe you don't even ask for a raise when it's time, right? So money is kind of a, an interesting thing, but how do you think understanding and the mindset around money has changed in of digital currencies? And what role do you see your book playing in this transformation? Because I see this as just a catalyst for, a lot of us who, you know, haven't been comfortable with, with it in many ways. And so um, if we're not comfortable with the paper money, then right. why would we be comfortable with the one <laughs> sometimes, right? Right. Absolutely. I mean, this is a great time. I have not, uh, despite all of my like educational privilege and, and going to Northwestern and being the, you know, the editor in chief of my law journal and all these things, I learned more in the last six years about money, monetary policy, um, challenging my own fears and like just historically um, my relationship with money, with debt, um, hyper consumerism, right? To really prop up a capital gov capitalistic government, there are only a few people at the top of the pyramid building their wealth um, by ensuring that the rest of us consume. They issue and paper, you know, print money like it's going out of style to inject enough into a system to encourage people to spend. And then sometimes you spend too much. So they hike up the interest rates to try and slow down spending. And it, we're being manipulated all the while. Those who are creating opportunities either through investments or through their businesses that are built really on the backs of others. This is what the United States um, and many colonialized areas have been built on the backs of free and cheap labor, right? And hyper consumerism. So I had to sit with that. I had to sit with my own role in having, you know, six figure debt and all sorts of things and wanting what I wanted when I wanted it, but never building into my future, let alone the future of my family and future generations. Um, and so I learned a lot about myself in the process because. And this is my personal experience. Um, drop an affirmation in the chat if, if this happened to you as well. Raised with the idea of getting a great education, did that. We've all done that. It's education is thing that people can't take away from you, right? You get a good government job or the equivalent, some six figure something or other. You get a house, um, a burial plot, <laughs> some insurance, and you've made it, right? Um, but when we um, take a look at how wealth is built and the wealth disparities um, among black and brown folks and white folks of the same uh, educational prowess or even less, it's staggering. It'll take you 140 years to catch up doing the same thing. If you want to do something different, we have to uh, get something different. We have to do something different. Um, and so challenging your assumptions just about money and your relationship to it brings you to a point from like, um, I think of it as like Kwanzaa principles, the idea of like self-determination, cooperative economics, collective work and responsibility, purpose, faith, all of those things, creativity, um, 
Kwanzaa really tracks really nicely with the cypherpunks who created uh, cryptocurrencies to begin with. It's about autonomy. It's about financial privacy in a way that you cannot enjoy by just dealing with a certain type of asset or currency. And that's the power and the opportunity as long as you don't fall victim to the, the pitfalls of, of crypto as well. We might actually even jump into the, um, the training and I think I can highlight those things a little bit more because the mindset thing is critical. If we take the yeah. old mindset into the new, it was, it's the same result. Yeah, let, let's do it. Let's definitely do it. All right, let's do that. Um, and for those, um, as Tanya's gearing that up, if you have questions after, we're going to go to some questions and we got some other little fun things for you to do and engage, but start putting your question in. I saw some of you already start to drop it, but while you have the the woman herself up here, um, you better tap in. And I, I see that lovely picture of your mama. That's Is your mama no. here? Hey, mom. Yeah, I see your hand raised, but I don't, it might have been a mistake. I don't know if she meant to do that. Okay. I'm just to raise your hand. You tell us to that. And Crystal, okay. you are, but oh, she took it down. She's like, oh, Lord, no. All right. <laughs> Very good. All right. Let me quick you. First of all, shout out to my mom. Put a heart in the chat. I think my dad is here too. Put a purple heart in the chat. We give them some love as well. Um, so unbelievably supportive. When I started talking about this magic internet money and here they came and they were like, baby, you like it. I love it. I don't know if you all can tell, but I am an only child. Um, but I had a lot of therapy. So I think I'm doing better. Um, and even if you don't agree, just agree. Uh, be nice. All right. So taking you through the myths of the book. So if you have your own book, you can follow along. If you don't have it yet, you will soon because you're ordering tonight. It's going to come super fast. The 10 myths that are in the book. First of all, not a myth is separating fact from fiction. That's like the first book end. And then you have the 10 myths in between. And then we end with From Cash to Crypto, where I give you the step-by-step -step process of how you begin. Uh, but I spent a lot of time on demystifying the space answering your questions. I have a very extensive glossary as well so that you are um, empowered with a, a solid foundation to go from the why and the what into the how. Um, and so I found that that's the best way to kind of onboard people as well. So I deal with the myth is uh, crypto too volatile, only for criminals, one big scam, bad for the environment. If these any of these resonate for you, drop that in the chat. Like what's the most pressing myth of these that you uh, believe in your own right? That crypto is problematic because it's anonymous and untraceable, isn't secure, is completely unregulated, too complicated or difficult to use, or just a passing fad. And uh, one that was particularly important to me, and I thank Lynette Calfani Cox, um, who is one of the two uh, authors of a forward. The other, shout out to Arlen Hamilton from Backstage Capital for writing a forward as well. Both tremendous women in their own right. Uh, Lynette, when she was giving me comments on the book, she thought it was great, but what was missing was a more full-throated approach to dealing with where the space is for Black people, Brown people, women, queer community, others that are systemically and systematically marginalized and then make a stronger case because on the continent of Africa in particular, it makes me think of Ghana, uh, Nigeria sticks out as well, even in South Africa, there's very robust adoption and use, daily use of Bitcoin in particular. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's special. And so we have to make the case for, is this just for the stereotypical um, heteronormative white male from tech or finance. And uh, I make a compelling case that it's not. Um, it's very interesting that Black people in particular actually over-index in crypto, which is why a lot of us got wrecked in the last cycle, because it was a lot of FOMO, buying in, but not fully appreciating or understanding about the, uh, the cycle and energy of money. So more on that later. But what I wanted to highlight here, given my conversation with Minda, is this idea of new mindset. And I love so much that she's highlighting this because the book is about the myth of crypto, but hopefully you will learn about yourself and your relationship 
to wealth and where you want to be a year from now, five years from now, 10 years from now, et cetera. Um, and new money is going to require a new mindset. So quickly, wherever you are, um, if you have a pad or your, your electronic device is thinking about a million dollars, this million dollar question and writing down your total income from last year. If you made over a million dollars last year, use $10 million as um, the, the new level. But writing down your total income from last year and subtracting that from a million or whatever your next level is. And that's the cost of working for your money instead of having your money work for you. That's the cost of trading time for money instead of having your money work for you. Creating investments and business opportunities that do not come back into your house void. <laughs> they go out and create a return of income, uh, that ROI, so that you can be at the south of, in the south of France with me, sipping champagne and minding your black-owned business, right? The idea is that you want to keep getting what you're getting, keep doing what you're doing, and and I use the uh, median wealth of black families just from 2016. It hasn't gotten any better, I assure you, because this, uh, but we have 17.6, just the median compared to, to the median wealth of uh, white families in 2016, which tends to come from passing down um, real estate, having something at the end of your life that has grown over time so that the next generation doesn't have to start over again. If we're starting over again in the next generation, we're starting even further behind. There is no starting over. Um, and generational wealth is not built on high income. Generational wealth accumulation comes from capital assets, from buildings, from stocks and bonds, businesses, from intellectual property, and yes, from crypto assets. Uh, the, the word crypto comes from cryptography, which is a way of encrypting data. And so it's just kind of a magical word of the encryption of messaging. And now the message is not just information, but it's actually value. Traditional investments are not enough. And if you miss the opportunity from a first mover advantage to stay ahead of the curve, because most people are not investing, many people don't even know what we're talking about, uh, but this is a first mover opportunity that although you could definitely lose a lot as well, depending upon how much you might invest, but there are the potential for high returns. I talked about my own personal experience, the opportunity to at least diversify with something that might be a little bit more volatile with something like a bond um, so that you're overall balancing your portfolio, uh, that you are missing out on technological innovations and are not going to be able to speak the language of the future of money and work and wealth. Access to decentralized finance, as I mentioned earlier, exposure to emerging projects where the there's a lot of risk in early investment, but the upside could be tremendous. Imagine uh, investing in IBM or Google or Apple early on, right? All those opportunities that we miss when we don't know that we don't know or aren't in the old boys club to be able to pay, uh, to take advantage of it. Think of the first mover advantage when people were kind of first to get land and, and, and real estate, right? Um, the dot-com boom and bust and reorganization, like a lot of money was made in Silicon Valley before we even knew that Silicon Valley was a thing, right? Um, mobile technology came and really changed the game. We, we uh, had a shout out to the, <laughs> the Blackberry, the Blueberry, the Blackberry. Yeah, I wasn't a Blackberry thing, but I saw a lot of BB love in the chat. And then we have emerging technologies that came after that. And finally, virtual currencies and other crypto assets. Early investment gives a first mover advantage that tends over time with prudent investments and strategic placements and balancing of an overall portfolio to create things that you can't do on your own. And so I wanted to show you, if you were with me last night, then you know that this slide of Bitcoin's all-time trajectory from 2009, January 2009, when Bitcoin was first launched up until now, this is the all-time chart. So drop a plus one in the chat if you've heard that Bitcoin is dead. Like every time there's a down market, Bitcoin evidently is dead. I want somebody to put on their readers and see this number. I can't even read it because I'm not good at math. But the all-time trajectory, you can tell by this, this is around the time that I got in. We had a bear market. 
than that insane bull run that we saw everything happening in the Super Bowl ads, et cetera, et cetera. Then we had the downturn. Guess what else happened? It was around um, macroeconomics in terms of, of the um, pandemic. We had wars and rumors of wars. Now we have actual wars. But here at the beginning of 2023, we've seen an increase over time. But you have to take the wider view to see what's going on. The present value of Bitcoin is 33000 and change uh, per coin. You can buy a fraction of it. You can open up your, in fact, if you have Cash App right now, not legal or investment advice, open up your Cash App and buy $5 of Bitcoin right now and then just leave it there. That's something you do. You will own some Bitcoin. You'll be better off today than you were yesterday. Um, and you will see that over time, how things change. This is another slide that I want to show you to help you understand the historical cycle of up and down markets or bull markets and bear markets. Um, up, 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 down. Up, 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 down. Up, 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 down. And then what's going on in 2023? We've already seen from the example, and that I took that from coinmarketcap.com. It's one of the best resources. It's free 99. It's an aggregator of all information and not trying to sell you anything. They have actually have good learning um, tools there as well so that you can see the historical data on every single coin and token that ever existed. Um, we are clearly in an up cycle now. Um, prominent folks who give investment advice finally saw for the first time um, in a long time that Bitcoin just touched 30,000. Bitcoin got the memo because it heard that I was releasing this book and evidently it decided to have a little mini bull run that pushed past uh, 31,000 as of last night. Today is 33 and change. This is the, um, the chart from the one day to show you some of the volatility, but volatility isn't bad. You just have to um, approach it differently and be sensitive to volatile assets and offset them with things that are more stable over time. And every nascent and emerging asset class goes through a huge period of volatility before there's more liquidity in the market, more people come in, the regulatory environment starts to calm down, which is happening right now, and things move forward. This is the one month chart. So see how 26,000 all the way up to 33, it could be 35 by this point now. This is like two hours ago. Um, I just want you to see, this is the one year. This is when people said Bitcoin was dead. Um, right. <laughs> so I want you to have facts, not fiction, so that you see the movement. Bitcoin is up 74% this year. And thinking about the down, 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 up, or up, 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 down, whatever that, that was, where are we now um, when we're thinking about money and not just all money, but specifically cryptocurrencies over time? And Bitcoin is the OG. It's the kind of the rising tide that lifts all boats. But there's a lot of junk tokens out there. Don't chase meme coins. Don't chase the equivalent of penny stocks. It makes no sense. You spend the time to learn the difference between Bitcoin and ETH, um, between uh, stable coins and central bank digital currencies that every government, including the United States, is working on right now. And understand fundamentally, back to uh, what Minda and I were talking about, that men, uh, uh, money is a social agreement. It requires trust. And the dollar has not been backed by physical commodity, gold, for decades. People always ask me, well, what's Bitcoin backed by, what's the dollar backed by? The full faith and cre uh, credit of this crazy government that is nearing another shutdown and doesn't have a speaker in the same year where we had a bank failure, two bank failures, regional three regional bank failures, including Silicon Valley Bank, where they said, don't worry, your pretty little head, nothing to see here. Um, we need to pay attention about what's going on and have alternatives because it is about trust and you have to figure out where do you place your trust when you're comparing crypto from government issued money and which types of cryptocurrencies is, are, are the right types for you, given your age, your stage and your risk tolerance, which is critically important as well. In the interest of time, I'm not going to go through this, but I will share this slide with you all afterwards to be in, begin to compare and contrast uh, crypto and other types of currencies. If you take the um, fundamentals course and shout out to the person who won it earlier 
If you're going to be in the membership, and I highly recommend, I have an unbelievable deal at the end of this that you can join if you um, so desire so that you can really dig in. You can take from cash to crypto and learn more as well um, and figure out even what blockchain is. I talked earlier about this um, decentralized way of organizing data. You can think of it roughly as uh, the difference between um, a bank or a business controlling all of the data, which is certainly what we have now, or a government, versus no one person or entity actually um, controlling it. Uh, it's a database of transactions and balances so that in real time, you can actually see every single Bitcoin transaction. I can never see all the transactions that even hit my bank account. I'm just patiently waiting of you know days or weeks for the money to actually hit, which I hate. Um, but think of it as like a group text. You could have 10 people talking. You can delete the record of the conversation from your phone. But as long as those nine other people still have a record, that information persists. That's a really kind of just rudimentary way of thinking about what blockchain is. And finally, I wanted to give you a few slides about how finance is changing. If you ask why should you care, you should care because CNBC said in the first quarter, and it's proving itself to be true, Bitcoin is one of the top five best returns for the remainder of 2023. And they said that in, in, in Q1. If you watch CNBC or any other station, uh, channel like that, they will have the running um, prices for Bitcoin and for Ethereum, for example. And I want you to start paying attention because millionaires are paying attention. 73% own or want to invest in crypto. Um, we have Deutsche Bank quietly planning to offer, that was some time ago, so actually offering crypto custody solutions for their high net worth clients. We have JP Morgan changing its tune. We have Visa and MasterCard and Fidelity and PayPal as well and Cash App uh, for those who follow the instructions of the professor, went into their Cash App and bought $5 or whatever um, you wouldn't mind losing in Cash App just to see how easy it is. The fact that a Bitcoin exchange traded fund is very close to adoption here in the next six months to one year because the SEC has lost every major um, battle that they sought to, to um, put forth against some of the stalwarts of the industry. Um, Gary Gensler and the SEC not doing so well with their, their actions against individuals. And that is also probably the reason you're seeing more activity with Bitcoin right now. The Grayscale ETF is something that might be on the horizon. In the spirit of full disclosure, I am on the board of the digital currency group that currently owns Grayscale as well. Um, and so finally, just I want you to start thinking about your risk and reward. This is another bonus that you'll receive is the risk assessment that I want to share with everyone after this as well. So I'll be following up with an email, but you have to figure out your risk tolerance. It's focused on age and stage. It will cause you to challenge all of your assumptions about everything, that you have to do some a few things to uh, be very intentional about your next move. Be very present, be very clear, ask for help read this book and start to learn about money rather than trusting others to take care of you. Separating fact from fiction is critically important as well. Drop uh, no more FUD in the chat. We're not doing FUD. We're not doing fear, uncertainty, and doubt because you're going to start to look at your own wealth plan and your own wealth strategies, figure out what wealthy investors are doing, and make sure that your mindset matches as well as your energy matches someone who is finding a way to make money while they sleep. Because if you don't find a way to make money while you sleep, you will work until you die. If you're trading your time for money and don't find a way to make money while you sleep or drink champagne with me in the South of France, you will work until you die. So thinking about getting rich quickly because the alternative, we're not talking about scams, or schemes, we're talking about if you had the choice to get rich quick, slow, or not at all, put in the chat which one you would do. Get rich quickly, slowly, or not at all. Like those are the three options. Those are the three options, right? But I want us to change our mindset about scheme and scam because that does not create wealth. 
But if you want to get rich quick, you have to get smart quicker. And that's what this book does for you so that you're not left behind anymore. Um, as, if it depends on me, we're not doing that because I want you to be ready and set so that you can grow. It's about time in the market. It's about setting your foundation that's going to propel you and support you in good times and bad so that you're making money in up markets and down markets. It's about continuing your crypto education. It's about not the short-term quick win without the work and the intention and the participation. And that starts here with the foundation that I am working for you so that to ensure that you're going to be on the leading edge of this change and that you actually are um, grabbing your first mover advantage. And so um, when I take these slides down, what Minda and I are going to close out on after giving away some more awesome things is what your next step is going to be as well. Um, and think about if there are three things that you're going to do, team, let's um, keep track of these things as they pop up in the chat as well. Minda, you keep your eye on it too. The three things that every person will do as a result of this, if it's buy a book, take a course, get a membership, and I'm darn near going to give everybody a membership tonight. Some will actually get it for free 99 and the others will have an opportunity as well so that we are healthy. Lord knows we're going to be wealthy um, and wise for sure, for sure. So who's ready to go? Who's ready to go? If you say, let's go, let's grow, put that in the chat. It's like one of my favorite things to say, let's go, let's grow, let's go, let's grow. The opportunities to work with me, VIP trainings, corporate trainings as well. One of the best ways that you can help me if you are connected to a corporation right now, um, you know, small groups or VIP training opportunities. I am available to do those things. There's limited um, opportunities, but they certainly exist. And one of the best ways you can help me is to recommend me for speaking, for training, um, for short-term and long-term contract work uh, with corporations that need this work to assess risks, uh, to understand risk and rewards, to understand how to pivot their business, given what I've done um, in the education realm as well. My courses start at 997. Membership regularly, because it's launching this week, would be monthly 250. But what I'm going to do tonight for those who sign up um, tonight or in the period of time now through Sunday, um, you can become a part of the membership, regular book updates, as I said, live monthly masterclasses, member-only newsletter, the video replay bank, um, the curated conversations and support with community as well. Yeah, if y'all are trying to roll with me to St. Martin or San Juan, we're kind of going back and forth beginning next year as well. 100% money back guarantee because I just believe so strongly in what I've done. And what I can do when we work together for your continuing crypto education. The founder circle is listed on the website. It's 10,000 is one payment of 10,000 for the lifetime. Annual memberships would be $2,500. Monthly memberships, $250. So who was that that won the, the annual membership? You're killing it already. You already got $2,500 worth of value tonight um, just for being here. But what I will actually do for anyone who joins the membership as we're launching now, we're still up, uploading the back end. Um, it's probably going to take us through the end of the week because we have so much information to put there and also um, leaving Thinkific to move to Thrivecart. So you're going to be watching it as it's being built as well. The one-time payment of um, $49.99 if you become a founder, a founding member, there are only 10 of those slots and you have free access to one in person as well. The annual membership will be $4.99 instead of $2,500, but you have to do this before all, um, October 27th. That is when this officially opens up to the general public. And I just wanna lock in those who are ready to go and grow as a first mover advantage. It's a fast action reward for, for sure. And if you join tonight, pay in full tonight, any membership level. So it could be $99, $4.99, or 
for $4,999. You get uh, free access to the Bitcoin Breakthrough. And I can send those out tonight. You can give access to that. That's a really great way to get in, understand Bitcoin, have your breakthrough um, in the same time. I'll have this up if you have some other technology. Um, I know my team is going to drop this in the chat, but I also have a QR code here as well. Join the membership join kind of this revolution, get the support of me and the community um, that has built over time the ability to really not just have an evolution, but a revolution um, before most people are even figuring it out. Um, and so with that, you have the QR, QR code here, but I'm going to take this down and, and rejoin Minda at this point. Team can definitely drop that down. And if you have any questions about this as well, drop that in the chat and we'll be happy to ask. So that's like a, a quick little training. And uh, just a little something, a little something for the people. You you gave it to them, Tanya. Listen, if they were ever skeptical or like, what what is the course like or what's inside the book? If you didn't realize that you just got all the gems dropped down on you, okay? Um, I felt like you just touched us all with so much information. So listen, there's a couple of call to actions. Uh, you know, we only have about 30 minutes left in this party. The number one thing is to go and buy the book. Okay, we're going to drop the link in the chat because we want you to have that. And we're going to do something fun to where we get everybody engaged here mm -hmm. in just a bit. But go and get the book tonight. And we already told you, in case you're just joining us, that if you purchase it today and you give us the receipts, you send the information that you will get. Tanya, just for the people in the back who might have forgot what they get if they go ahead and get the book tonight. All right, so you get the um, the DMD glossary, you get the risk assessment. I forgot to say that earlier. So the risk assessment, you get the DMD fast action bundle, which is a bundle of tools, resources, um, short videos as well. And um, there's a, I think there's like a video replay in there. It's five really, really special things. The white papers that I wrote recently where I talk about um, uh, traditional investments not being enough and giving you step-by-steps going further from that as well. And so that's going to be um, a fantastic bonus. So everybody's going to get that, but you got to do what, Winda? You got to do what, Minda? <laughs> you got to buy the book. <laughs> you got to buy the book. You can't participate in the reindeer games if you don't have the book. You can't get this information. You know, Tanya, you said something when you were giving us just a mini sample of all the good information you said the millionaires know this information right mm -hmm. so what's the difference between us and them it's the access to education and you are demystifying all of this information for us um so that we can get in on the goods too and shout out to anybody who just opened up their cash app and took that advice oh. okay and bought that that crypto listen um i went in and got got ten dollars worth as you said it okay <laughs> So I'm like, you know what, let me go ahead and go ahead and do that. But drop the receipts. The other thing we want to do, because again, we talked about it at the, the top uh, of the hour or the last hour was that all of the books that you buy this week help Tanya make that best sellers list. So we want to make sure that we see digital money demystified on the list. We want to, we want to see that. Don't you want to see that put Put your emojis, put your put some love in the chat, send some love so that we know you want, you're here. So we know you want that for her. So make sure you, you get the book tonight. Tell somebody about it. I'm asking you to tell at least five people in your network this week to go ahead and get the book. Let's run it up. Let's run it up on Amazon, on Barnes and Noble. Let's get it going. And then the other thing I want you all to do is take a moment, open up your phone, go to your, get a new tab. If you're like me, I got 50 tabs open, <laughs> get a new tab, <laughs> go on Amazon. We are going to post a review tonight because not only does buying the book matter, make a difference, but it also the reviews, the review, reviews signal that this book is important, that people are buying it. And so we want to do that too. Tanya, anything you want to add about, you know, what type of, how easy it is for people just to go on and, and do the reviews? Absolutely. We actually have a link directly to the reviews and it's going to be really, really important to do that. Um, there are a lot of, uh, I'm not uh, calling out or attracting the haters, but I think the reality to make sure that it is abundantly clear 
that this is the right voice, it's the right book, and it's at the right time. And to celebrate that, there's a lot of stuff out there. It's a lot of stuff, but to really support this is going to be critically important. Um, and I am very invested in supporting independent booksellers. Today, it's important to post these things specifically to Amazon because Amazon drives um, the interest of independent sellers that also have just very limited shelf space. They're not going to carry or buy cases of digital money demystified unless they actually see that there is a lot of momentum and energy um, and enthusiasm for this book. And so going specifically to Amazon, wherever you buy from, um, it's important to make a statement there. And then in addition to that, it's not an either or, but a both and, but um, the industry looks there, independent sellers look there as well. Um, and so in addition to the, edit, the fantastic editorial reviews that are already at amazon.com, they want to hear from the people, want to hear the people. And it, you, you've all hear, heard me say probably that it takes a village to raise a book. You are my village. You are my villagers. And so um, showing up and showing out there is going to be critically important for sure. Okay, so let's drop a link in the chat. Let's make it real easy for for the for the squad members for the community. We're gonna all do this together. Yeah. We're gonna go. Let's do it right now. Don't wait till uh you know you put your chicken in the oven and you you forget. <laughs> <Isn't> <laughs> <it the truth? laughs> you said you were going to after you, after you called your friend back. We gonna do it together. So we're gonna drop the link. Drop the link in the chat so we can go ahead and run up. Amazon together and let them know that we're here and we're representing and and keep keep a bunch on stock so that uh, more yes. can come in. I'm finna do it right now. I thought I had it okay. Up. Do it. Oh yes. And then after you go ahead and write your five star review. Let's be clear. Let's be clear. Five star. Let's be clear. Five star review. Four um, does not get it there. No. Five stars. Listen, understand the assignment, everyone, please. Pretty please. Five star reviews. And then after that, if you have any questions that you want to ask, because I know that Tanya has given us so much that I'm sure things are just percolating in your mind. I know that some people have already been dropping their questions and then we're going to just have a little fun and answer some of those questions. And then I think you might, I think you said, uh, you know, I don't want to quote you on this, but I think you said you had another giveaway uh, as, as we, uh, get ready to close in in about 20 minutes or so there you go i might could i might could i think, it was, I, think it might <laughs> I don't want to force your hand or anything but you you know i thought that's what you said <laughs> i'm here for the people i'm trying to help the people help me that is literally my ministry is my reason for being today for sure yes um that's one of i actually i really really enjoy that and to see everybody really exciting Should we, so we're going to give you like a a, a minute or two you yeah, I'm doing it right now. I click, I'm clicking the link. Let's all go in and uh, put those five star reviews in right now while you're at the computer. No excuses. What would Beyonce do? Oh, that's not Beyonce. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, um, Beyonce, uh, what would she, she would say five star reviews, one of one. There's only one of one book, and that is <laughs> Digital Money Demystified. Exactly. Go from cash to crypto safely, legally, and confidently. As Tanya said, this is not about scamming. This is not, we're not pyramid scheming over here. Listen, just go ahead. <laughs> this is real money. I have to have another like Amazon account. I guess I can't do my own. <laughs> Did you review your own, Minda? <laughs> you know what? I didn't. <laughs> but I probably should have. <laughs> And I would love, oh, this is another thing. Well, I'm going to hold this for a second. I was checking out the uh, the prices here for, for Bitcoin. So something great is happening because of you all. You go ahead and click on there. It's real easy. At the very bottom, it says write a customer review, create a review. You see there, there's the, the five stars. Make sure you click the right star <laughs> right <laughs> one does not mean the best <laughs> understand the assignment <laughs> understand five is top tier okay <laughs> right 
Yes. And we appreciate you doing this. We appreciate, you know, you could be anywhere right now and you're here with us celebrating and we're just so glad that you're here having a good time. I hope that you have enjoyed tonight and I'm sure many of you are still hungover from the party last night. Yes. <laughs> rolled into. Love it. Yes. Beautiful. Drop a star in the chat when you finish or five so that we're staying on assignment. Well done, Roger. Well done, Dad and Bon. They understood the assignment. All right, if you understood the assignment, then you know what happens next. It says, review submitted, thank you. So. <laughs> 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 just so you know if you did it right that that's that's, that's what should happen afterwards <laughs> <laughs> thank you terry excellent excellent all right okay i love it listen you already got reviews ready to rock and roll on day one and we are excited and when you buy that extra book for your friend or a family member or somebody you love tell them Make sure you leave that five-star review as well. So we want to make sure that we just run it up. We want to make this book number one in all of its categories. Amen. Amen. That's interesting too, um, navigating and learning about all the categories. So uh, as I see here, it's funny when my book was first listed on Amazon, temporarily it was number three in digital currencies. I feel at a bare minimum, it should be number one in digital currencies. And uh, it would be really great to see. Well done, Subi, also known as Tanya's mom. <laughs> um, so it's interesting to see like dig uh, digital currencies, but there's so many others uh, as well. So that's been fascinating to see. Did you know, Minda, when you were writing the different, you know, categories that were most important for you? You know what, that that was something that I've learned along the way, Tanya. I did not know um, how the categories worked. I just assumed, oh, I'm writing a career book, a business book. But the other thing that happens that many people kind of behind the scenes may not know is that sometimes you may put yourself in a category and say, oh, this is this kind of book. And then the powers that be end up seeing it. And they're like, oh, no, we think this belongs in this category, right? And so it's all very, very weird sometimes. But like you said, we want to get you to number one in digital currencies. I mean, many of the genres, but we want to make sure that um, we see uh, Tanya Evans uh, and that lovely book cover that you have. <laughs> I remember when you were yeah. choosing what, what was the book cover and um, it's just a beautiful cover. And so um, I'm just excited for everybody to read the book if you haven't read it yet. And this is a book that you need. Listen, we're going into 2024. I know that might sound crazy to because the I don't know where the year has gone myself but be ready right um what did they say scared money don't make money so get this digital money demystified in your hand ASAP but mm -hmm. Tanya I know that there's some questions are we ready to answer a few of those while people are wrapping up those five star reviews absolutely absolutely so let me I should have been um um scanning through because I know there's some things and if you posted a question early on, go ahead and you might just re-up it because I'm looking for the queue before questions. Um, ah, that's a good one. I'm gonna come back. I see one already. So one of the questions that comes up is uh, how to pick the right currency and where to buy 
And I want it to be as simple as possible for you. Everybody actually doesn't have Cash App and I totally, totally get that as well. Um, but one of the ways that you can think about it is going to coinmarketcap.com um, and that would be the way to one, see the top 10 coins and tokens and just focus there for the moment. Another thing that you could do is to find out what coin or token you might hear about. And before you do anything, before you go to an exchange, before you do anything, go to coinmarketcap.com and look it up. Was it created yesterday? Was it created 10 years ago? Um, what is, is there a lot of trading volume that would suggest that a lot of people have it and it's of interest? Um, or is it just like a flat line? Um, has it been more volatile than Bitcoin, for example? You want to know enough about it. Go and find out like, what is the purpose of the token? Is it something that's connected to a project that you are interested in? Um, and so those are some of the ways that you can start to do your research. We say DYOR all the time. Where do people go to DYOR? It's not enough to just say, do your own research without having someplace um, to go. So that was one that I saw, and that's a really important thing. Also, let's see here. We have, um, right, the how, so in terms of purchasing and selling crypto, um, this is clearly important as well. So the purchase can be in a number of different places. And also coinmarketcap.com lists the various exchanges. This is how I start people in, in my courses. We focus on a couple of places. One, we focus on if somebody has Cash App, that's an easy way to start to um, acquire it. But Cash App is also a centralized place that is controlled by a single company. It's not decentralized, it's centralized. So the idea is not to just buy it and hold it in Cash App, but to have your own wallet. We call that self-custodying your crypto assets. That requires that you have a wallet that you control that's not controlled by some other um, company. We use Trust Wallet at um, Advantage Evans Academy. That changes all the time, depending upon what the latest technology is, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But that's an example. In terms of exchanging either dollars for Bitcoin, for example, or Bitcoin for, for uh, Ethereum, you do that on what's called exchanges. Now, an exchange is exactly what it's intended to do, allow you to um, trade pairs, meaning I'm trading dollars for Bitcoin, I'm trading Bitcoin for Ethereum. You're trading one asset for another, and then you are removing it from that platform. A lot of people lost a lot of money or got caught up in these recent bankruptcies because they left their money on a centralized exchange, thinking that it was functioning more as a bank than its purpose of literally just putting buyers and sellers together for the purpose of an exchange. Um, and so we use Kraken right now in my courses and in my community, and that's another place as well. Um, it's easy to buy and sell. I've liquidated positions, meaning some of my holdings, and gotten my money because it's connected to my bank account within hours. And it makes me think of somebody who bought uh, uh, books for me over the weekend. I've sold a lot of books over the weekend. I'm so grateful. I'm here in D.C., so my Howard people represented and they were paying me in various ways, but some people were paying in, in cash app. I didn't, that money from Saturday and Sunday did not hit my bank account until this morning. This morning, I was like, uh, $20 here, $20 there, $25. It was like, you know, 22 things just hit. Why was it that someone sent me money on Saturday and I didn't get it till today? Where is that? Um, and that's something that doesn't happen in the crypto space. So um, hopefully that's helpful. Um, all right, let's see. I have, um, thank you, Anthony, for sharing um, CoinMarketCap. Let me look here, because I know you sent me some things. Um, yeah, I can't, uh, you see any others, Minda? 
Yeah. Um, so we had another one. I know you sent it, but the chat is moving. Uh, pl please explain how crypto is purchased, liquidated, and valued. Is that one that we've, do we? Yep. Just did that one. Okay. Uh, my uh, headset went out on me. <laughs> so oh, I to... <laughs> um, but yeah. And I see some people said that they bought $10 on cash app. Hey. They went in cash, $5 on cash app. I'm Let's saying. Go. <laughs> okay. Let's go. Now I want you to watch it over the next couple of days and just see what happens. This is the kind of thing where you kind of set it and forget it, but you're going to learn to how to get it off of Cash App and into your own wallet. So that'll be the next step to uh, set up your, your own wallet. But you got it. You got it. I love that so much. I I, I know that um, we're almost at time, but I, I, I want to ask you one last question mm -hmm. and then we'll do, I think we'll give another, have another giveaway. Do we want to give another thing away and then have mm -hmm. some some closing remarks, but again, Tanya, I'm just so proud of you. Congratulations on this monumental revolutionary book. I know that um, it's going to be in the zeitgeist for infinity and beyond because um, this is very important. And so as we start to wrap up, what's your ultimate vision for digital money demystified and how do you envision it impacting the lives of its readers and the broader community? I know we touched on it throughout the night, but Take us on home with it. Yeah. Um, this is a source of empowerment. Like my greatest vision for the impact is that people say, oh, <laughs> I get it now. I get it. It's the beginning of the journey. But if there is the opportunity to say, I believe this, it's only for criminals. And then they read the chapter. And, and read information about um, crypto forensics firms that show that less than 2% of crypto is used in illicit transactions and that the number one currency used in uh, nefarious and illicit activities is actually the almighty dollar because it's the global reserve currency by a long shot. Um, they'll learn why a public facing system like Bitcoin or other public facing um, protocols make it really difficult to get away with bad activity because a blockchain is literally showing you every transaction and the chain. It's like the easiest way to follow the money. Um, you don't know who the person is. It's pseudonymous, not anonymous. And um, I think in the next five years, certainly by 10, but even in the next five years, excuse me, we will be using the same type of wallet idea for identity purposes. I actually think identity is a more interesting and more important way um, to use wallets than even money. Money will be, a it'll be passe. It's in, think of it in the same way that electronic uh, mail was the first use case, commercial use case for the internet before we've been doing like e-commerce. It was, you know, Brian Gumble and Katie Kirk were talking about the email and something, something, right? Now we don't even want to open emails, but it was like the revolutionary thing. Crypto is that same first use case for blockchain technology, but we're actually going to be using it for identity and a, and a whole other range of things. If people can get that and then secure their first mover advantage to start to move the needle as a matter of wealth, as a matter of um, pivoting businesses as well to take advantage. You may never invest ever, but if you prepare your business to be a leader in Web3 technology, that is a win as well. So the ability to kind of take the blinders off and give people permission to ask the next questions and do the next thing that makes sense for them. I love that so much. Um, you've just empowered each and every one of us uh, through the information that you've shared tonight through your books, through your courses. Um, I just want to give you another opportunity to remind people how they can connect because I'm sure you have a bunch of new fans tonight. Uh, <laughs> and um, they're like, I don't want to, I don't want my time to end with oh. Tanya Evans. I want more. So what does more look like for, for people? Absolutely. Well, first and foremost, and um, uh First and foremost, let me just start there, is digitalmoneydemystified.com. Um, I peppered it throughout the book. 
It is titled the same name, obviously, as the book, and that's going to be your ready resource, not only for memberships, but also for free masterclasses um, and to keep up with. Eventually, we're going to put all of the events up there, too, for book signings um, as well. And I have a contact page there uh, for folks who were saying that they couldn't figure out where to submit their um their receipts, for example, you can go there and on that contact page, send it for sure. I'll drop an email in the, the chat as well. But that's the first and most important place to engage with me at digitalmoneydemystified.com. Um, and also my weekly podcast. Uh, Minda was my first, uh, my first guest. You remember that? You're my first guest. At the end, I remember of that 2019. That was episode number one. I'm at episode 180 now. What do you think about that? 100, 180 every Listen, week. Listen, you still, you still here. <laughs> <laughs> the bottom. I started. <laughs> um, and so listening to Tech Intersect is is great too. You can get it wherever um, podcasts are listed and I will share a link in the chat as well, um, excuse me, for you to check it out. So I don't just deal with uh, crypto topics, although for the last 10 episodes, I did an episode each week that focused on a specific myth. And I invited people on to actually flip the mic. So they were actually interviewing me. Lynette Calfani Cox was on, had Harold Hughes from Bandwagon on. Um, Caitlin Long from Custodia Bank, Sandra Rowe from uh, GBBC. It was really, really fun. And they got to ask me questions about a particular myth. So definitely um, check out the podcast. And then finally, uh, on YouTube, my YouTube channel is uh, Advantage Evans. And you can find that every week. I am, well, I don't know if I'm going to go forward. It depends on if you all uh, show me love and want me to continue, but it's been really successful to do Myth Buster Mondays, where I take a myth or part of a myth from the book or just based upon questions that I was receiving. And I'm really starting to build out my YouTube presence for sure. I'll do some live um, YouTubing there every week in some form or fashion. So that is also um, a place to go. So those three things, you go to digitalmoneydemystified.com. If you check out Tech Intersect podcast and also my YouTube channel, um, the handle is Advantage Evans there on YouTube, and um, and, and that would be fantastic. So there's many ways to stay connected, but the first point is make sure you bought the book before you hit leave tonight on the Zoom screen <laughs> or whatever you're doing. Make sure that you get it and make sure that you support that you share. If you have social media, make sure that you repost and share because you never know who might see it too. And we want to make sure that they get all the information. And thank you to everybody who's already purchased the book, who went on tonight and wrote the reviews. We appreciate you doing that. And just for being here and rocking out with us, because again, we're so, so excited for our, our dear professor, <laughs> rock star, um, uh, leather coat wear where you know we know how she she gets 66 down and so 66 degrees in here not sweating yes listen you're looking great and the other thing I want to just put out there that Tanya didn't ask me to do but if you have a connection to a conference or speaking engagement or uh bulk book buys this is also a great opportunity for you to share it with any organizations that you're a part of or um conferences you're booking speakers we also want to make sure that we get that book out to a, a larger audience as well. And so, or you have press opportunities, you know, that we want, that we want to share. So make sure that you just do that. And again, thank you for being here because this book is so important, um, not just for our community, but for the entire ecosystem. And so um, Tanya, thank you again for trusting me to be here to celebrate with you. Um, I appreciate our sisterhood, our friendship, and um, I'm just so so proud of you and I can't wait for us to be able to toast in real time uh to your success and all that's to come and I just want to make sure that I give you the final final words and the team tonight behind the scenes thank you for all that you've done to prepare for these last two days as well thank you so much you know I, I appreciate you so much anybody who doesn't believe that true true connections can first be built on texts and voicemails 
uh, voice messages, then you don't know me, Amanda. You don't know me in hearts. You don't know. <laughs> so I appreciate you. When I thought, who would I want to share this moment with? I mean, it, it was just it. It was a very short list of one. And here you are. <laughs> so I appreciate you and your support constantly. Um, and then I want to give a shout out to my parents. Uh, thank you so much. My mom is in love with her grand book. I think she's the first person to um, coin that phrase. <laughs> oh, my dad, shout out to Bonnie and all my family and friends and a bunch of people who I don't know. So I'm happy that that you're here and that we get to connect in this way too. And I certainly want to do these last give it, giveaways for sure, for sure. So um, let's give these two autographed copies away as well. Um, I just got the list so give me one second while i scan it okay again. yeah we want we don't want to close the close the night out without some some more prizes so no, we got, let, we let's got. see who all right I oh, I, that grand book I, <laughs> I said you have to tell ask your mom does it have it on its own room is it sitting uh you know <laughs> i don't know i have to go and see yeah it's probably like tucked in now you know it's very late for books <laughs> All right, here we go with the um uh the let's give away the the bundles. I think that's going to be uh, the the uh, Bitcoin breakthrough challenge. The Bitcoin breakthrough challenge for Larita Rockington and Terry Quintos. Larita and Terry, if you're still here, must be present to win, but I think I think they're in the building. Drop a, a something in the chat so so we can see. <laughs> Congratulations to all the winners tonight. Come come get your gifts. Yeah. <laughs> come get them. Now, break through. Because it's all good until we sign off. And it's like, now, who was that again? All right, we got that. <laughs> Excellent. Congratulations. We're going to do um, two uh, um, autographed copies here. So, um, we have Cheryl Neal, Cheryl Neal, and Henry Shelton. Cheryl Neal. Okay. And Henry Shelton. I I just seen Henry. Uh, he was saying Godspeed and all of your endeavors. Glad you're educating the world oh. on crypto. We certainly need a trusted voice. Perfect. Hey. I love it. Perfect. Good. All right, so, and then do we have the second person? Okay, Larita said she's here. Okay. Okay. All right, you're in. We'll all get the follow-up. And then the two final annual memberships to Digital Money Demystified Member Club. The doors are opening this week to the general public but two lucky folks are going to get these. Um, th in fact, let's see who even wants it. Let's see who even wants it. So um, it's, uh, let's say um, uh, hashtag show me the money. <laughs> hashtag show me the money. Who, want, who money. wants it? <laughs> Thank you, Ruby, for your five stars. Yes. Show me the money. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants in? We'll give it. We'll give it some time. Um, and uh, this is a way to stay connected here for sure. And I cannot wait. The first um, monthly masterclass, live masterclass, will be um, in November. So we're going to kick that off asapidly, and I think it's going to be a really fun way to stay connected and an empowering way as well. It's too hard to do this in isolation. And once you find a trusted resource and community, then you want to rock with that for sure, for sure. All right. So I don't, again, I don't have my tambourine, but imagine if you will, well, Beyonce is singing in the background and we're going to make it happen. We're going to make it happen. Um, I'm looking for the, I'm getting my, okay. I got the, uh, the text, uh, Diane Jarvis and Janira Hill, Diane Jarvis. And Janira Hill are the winners. Let me see. Members only. Members oh, only. Oh, <laughs> members only. We're bringing it back. <laughs> Congratulations to everybody who won tonight. And if you bought the book, you already won too. You, already you won. were here tonight. You already won. You're you're all winners. 
I love it. Um, I'm so grateful for everyone to be here tonight. Um, congratulations to Diane. Congratulations to Janira. Um, this is very exciting. And uh, it's so wonderful see, to see some familiar names as well and to share in this with you all. I certainly want you all to join me in thanking Minda for being here. I can think of, again, no better person to be on this journey with tonight and share this. And yes, we will raise a glass of three when, I'm, um, when we're coasting, we're on one of the coasts. Um, thank you so much for ordering the book. Keep up the energy. That's the energy we want to see. I am following up with you after this to send out all the information and all the links. And um, this has just been a blessing. I'm so, so excited. Again, shout out to Broad Book Press to Jen Dorsey, Vanessa Campos. I could not have done this with you. The quality of this book, even just like, if you already have your book and you could just touch it, the quality, because um, I've been in publishing too, they spared no expense to put this amazing book out. So I appreciate them for that. To um, Arlen Hamilton and Lynette Calfani Cox for these extraordinary forwards and everyone who provided early reviews. And you, you're my village takes a village to raise a book and this book nowhere but up no limits only levels right and um and no ceilings no ceilings let's go no ceilings so thank you so much everyone have a great evening or day or afternoon wherever you are and uh like the last hashtag we should be is is bestseller let's get that energy bestseller that's energy. it there's no other <laughs> hashtag okay <laughs> That's it. Congratulations so again, Tanya. We're proud of you. And everybody, make sure you tell at least five people about Digital Money Demystified. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>